but there was just something about it. You know, the horns would come in and all of that type of shit. And it just always kind of made you... Oh, speaking of that, like horns and all of that and like sort of minor chords and shit. My daughter is ridiculously into Charlie Brown. And I can tell you this, like, there is no fucking way. It's just because it's old. Like, what the fuck happens to that? Dude, I saw one the other day. This fucking kid, it's Valentine's Day. And he goes to school with a, I can never say this word, attache, 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 even fucking briefcase, right? Because he's anticipating he's going to get all these Valentines. Now, I don't know why he's doing this because nothing in his life has ever worked out. Like, this kid is a sad sax, sad sack, right? He's on the Mount Rushmore sad sack. So the poor bastard shows up with this, I don't know, spoiler alert, right? He doesn't get any fucking Valentines. And he keeps checking in with the, the, the kid who plays piano. You could probably take a master class from Schroeder, right? He keeps checking in with him. He's like, no, Charlie, I'll let you know. You know, no one's written you yet. And he's fucking sitting there expecting the world to show him love when I, I just never see people always yelling at him, calling him a blockhead. He doesn't really have, like, they're not your friends. Like, I sit there and I fucking watch him. I'm like, Charlie, these guys are not your friends. You got to fucking punch one of these kids in the face and get a little respect, you little big-headed cunt, right? But he never does it. So the fucking little kid, he never gets a valentine. I really felt bad for him. And he goes home, and at the last second, he gets to his mailbox, and he looks in, like maybe there's going to be one. Now, if this was a modern-day Pixar movie... He would look in, and there would be one. But this wasn't. This shit was made when we were fucking fighting in Vietnam, you know? <clears throat> They'd cured polio only like 10 years ago. People fucking, I don't know, I think life was harder. I don't know what the deal was. He fucking opens the mailbox. There's no Valentine in there. He gets pissed. He slams his fucking briefcase down on the mailbox and then goes to kick the post, and he hurts his foot. Somehow they brought it around where he was sort of happy towards the end. But, like, when it was Valentine's Day and he's going to school and he had that fucking briefcase and you just know what's going to happen. But you still have the hope, just like he does, like when he goes to kick the football every time. You're like, well, maybe, like, you know, maybe he'll get one. He won't get any. And then in the end, maybe he'll get one. And it's like, nope, nope, he doesn't get shit. And we're going to take you slowly and painfully through this whole fucking journey. Um, it's funny because my, my daughter doesn't like really intense scenes in movies or anything like that, even in like these Pixar movies, especially if anybody dies or anything, whatever the fuck, you know, that Lion King thing, like she just doesn't like it and she just tells me to shut it off. But for some reason she can sit through the unbelievable depressing episodes of Charlie Brown. I will tell you, and I will go to my grave saying this, one of the great fucking scenes in animation history though is when Sally yells at fucking Linus for ruining her Halloween because she didn't go out and get any candy. Instead, she sat in a pumpkin patch waiting for the fucking, the great pumpkin. And she was waiting such a long time for the great pumpkin. Um, and then she just lets Linus have it. You fucking, she was, she was calling him a blockhead, but she was like basically, you fucking asshole. Could have been going out there getting candy and you went in and, you know, dragged me out to this bullshit. And I fucking believed you. And there was no goddamn great pumpkin. And now everybody's going to laugh at me. And you know what? To Linus's credit, he just, he sat there and took it. He knew he was wrong. There's a lot of hair issues on that fucking show. You know? Massive amounts of fucking alopecia. I mean, Charlie Brown looks like he went through, like, chemo. Um... I mean, Jesus, you know, how, can, I, can you just give him one fucking Valentine? Um, I remember I took piano lessons when I was just failing miserably the first time I lived in L.A. I took piano lessons for like, I don't know, two or three times. I always wish I stuck with those things. Because there's always, there's a lot of pianos out there. Have you noticed that? Like, you always walk in and you're like, fuck, I wish I, I wish I, every time you see it, you're like, fuck, I wish I stayed, stayed with that. You could sit down right now like Bill Murray and Grand, Groundhog Day. Bang out a few hits. Um, <laughs> I know how to play a couple songs on the piano. I can play the beginning to um, that Journey song, Don't Stop Believing. I think I can do all Yacht Rock, Lionel Richie, uh, Easy Like Sunday Morning. 
oh yeah, I'm coming with the hits people. And I'm, and I'm starting to fuck with Chicago Saturday in the park, which for the longest time I thought was about drug addiction. I finally looked up the, uh, the lyrics. I thought initially it was about a guy going to the park, you know, sort of enjoying what he was seeing, and like a homeless guy, you know? Saturday. Or was he singing in Boston? Say in the park. I think it was the 4th of July. People laughing, people singing. A man selling ice cream, singing Italian songs. And I've been waiting such a long time. I'm like, waiting for what? For Saturday? It's like, is he meeting his dealer? I just never understood it. It's like, well, you know, the fucking time flies by. And then the, the, the second verse, I always thought it was... Something about a fog. It's a different word. I don't know what the fuck it is. I looked it up yesterday. I forget what it is. But I thought he was singing the word fog, and I thought he was like, you know, now his life was going by him. Because there's something about Chicago. Like, even their happier songs, you know, when Terry Kath was still in the band, um, there was like a melancholy to him. Like the shit always felt like, uh, I don't know what it was. It felt like, heavy like it isn't like a light i'm trying to think of the other songs or whatever i'm sorry anyway that is the uh podcast i'm on my way out to wilkes bear um to do some shows and then i'm going up to uh i'm doing a show out in a field in upstate new york where i i think it's the same place where they had uh woodstock dean del rey's opening up for me that's what he said and then i end it in uh new jersey at this amphitheater that I played back in 05 or 06 on the uh, Opie and Anthony uh, Traveling Virus Tour. Now, that doesn't seem too long ago, but that was like that was like 16 years ago. We get it, Bill. You're old. Jesus Christ. All right.